Now we will study the grass morphology of the chronic uh, pyelonephritis. Grass morphology of the kidney when there is chronic pyelonephritis. So the first point is that one or both kidneys can be involved. And this point we have already studied in unilateral and bilateral chronic obstructive and chronic reflex associated pyelonephritis. It depends on the situation. If uh, situation varies, then we, uh, one or both the kidneys are involved. The second point is that there will be sclerosis. And this sclerosis can either be diffuse or focal. So sclerosis will either be diffuse or focal. Or focal. So the third point is very high yield because this is very important regarding the diagnosis of uh, diagnosis of the diseases of the kidney. And that is even if both kidneys are involved, they are not equally damaged. and contracted remember even if both kidneys are involved they will not be equally damaged and contracted, contracted. and this feature differentiate chronic pyelonephritis from benign nephrosclerosis and chronic glomerulonephritis in which the contraction is equal in these two conditions kidneys are equally contracted and in chronic pyelonephritis even if both kidneys are involved the damage and contraction will not be equal so if we have a radiologic image and we see that the kidneys are asymmetrically contracted then we will say that this is chronic pyelonephritis and if the kidneys are equally contracted we will say that this can either be a benign nephrosclerosis or chronic glomerulonephritis microscopic findings in chronic pyelonephritis are non specific and they are called non specific because such changes occur in other conditions of interstitial nephritis like analgesic Nephropathy. Microscopic findings in chronic pyelonephritis are non specific because such type of changes also occur in other conditions of interstitial nephritis, such as analgesic nephro nephropathy. And this condition is called analgesic nephropathy because it occurs with overuse of in sales. and phenectin Analgesic nephropathy occurs because, uh, because of the overuse of NSAIDs and phenectin So the microscopic findings in chronic pyelonephritis will be the first one will be uneven fibrosis 
there will be an uneven fibrosis of the interstitium of the kidney. The second one will be inflammatory infiltrates and what do you think this is a chronic inflammation what will be the inflammatory infiltrates in this condition lymphocytes lymphocytes and macrophages that must be some time and plasma cells but sometimes we can find Neutrophils. Now, the third condition we will study is a very important change that occurs during the chronic pyelonephritis, and that is thyroidization. Thyroidization of Wheels. What happens in this when we see a uh, tissue of the kidney affected by chronic pyelonephritis? There will be glassy appearing. And this collide cast is PAS positive. And this thing suggests that this tissue resembles the tissue of the thyroid gland. That's why it is called thyroidization of the tubules. Because this collide cause is periodic acid shift stain positive and this suggests that this thing resembles the tissue of the thyroid gland. That's why it is called thyroidization of the tubules. Understand? Yes. Should I repeat? No. Okay. Good. So this change, when this change appeared, this is a hallmark of the chronic pyelonephritis and the next thing we will study is arteriosclerosis and I will explain you why arteriosclerosis will occur in the chronic pyelonephritis is the kidney is a fibrous and the function of kidney is uh, very affected so it will not effectively filter the blood so there will be a increase in the extra cellular volume volume similarly if the kidney is not able to filter the blood properly so there will be a small amount of the filtrate and the so the kidney is not able to filter the blood properly the filtrate will be decreased and this will be sensed by the juxta glomerular cells and it will start secreting the increasing amounts of the renin and there will be the increased activation of the renin and angiotensin aldosterone system and this will further increase the extracellular volume by the uh, retention of uh, extra 
of water and sodium. So, because of these two reasons, there will be hypertension. Understand? Yeah. Yes. Because of these two reasons, there will be hypertension. And this hypertension will lead to the arterial sclerosis. Now you people understand that why arterial sclerosis occur in chronic pyelonephritis. Arterial sclerosis occurs secondary to hypertension. And hypertension occurs because of these two reasons. The increased extracellular volume because the kidney is not properly filtering and because of the increased activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. So now we will study the diagnosis that how we will diagnose the chronic pyelonephritis. Normally the patients of chronic pyelonephritis are diagnosed accidentally on the routine laboratory test because this disease is very progressive and the renal insufficiency occur very late in the course of the disease. That's why these patients come into the attention of the uh, medical field very late in the course of the disease. So the diagnosis is mainly made by radiologic investigation. On a radiologic image, we will see asymmetrical contraction of the kidneys. As I have, we have already discussed that in chronic pyelonephritis, there will be asymmetrical contraction of the kidneys, and this point differentiated from benign nephrosclerosis. And the second one was chronic glomerulonephritis. And the second point will be the blunting and deformity of the minor and major calyces and this change is called calyptasis so the first thing which we will observe in a radiologic image will be asymmetrical contraction of the kidneys and the second one will be the blunting and deformity of the calyces which is called calyptasis see this diagram we have see uh, we are seeing the diagram of the kidney showing the minor and major calyces see the normal calyces are sharp but this is the affected calyx which is blunted so this is blunting of the calyx which occur in chronic pyelonephritis so in clinical features <coughs> we have one condition which is called hyposthenuria hyposthenuria when the chronic pyelonephritis progresses, the tubular dysfunction occurs and the function of the tubules is to concentrate the urine to absorb all the essential elements and water and to concentrate the urine. But when tubular dysfunction occurs, there will be an inability to concentrate the urine. So the urine will be diluted and this condition is presented as for urea and not urea. So, in patients of the chronic pyelonephritis, we will observe the polyuria and not urea. And in the later stages, glomerulo. Sclerosis occurs. Later in the course of this disease, Glomeruli also become sclerose and we end up with nephrotic and then nephritic syndrome and then we observe all the signs and symptoms of these conditions like there will be proteinuria, hematuria and all those things which uh, we observe in nephrotic and nephritic syndrome. That was all about the chronic pyelonephritis. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel.